Hello, everybody, and welcome again to ChessLecture.com. This is International Master David Garrido. And today I'm going to be looking at a uh, very recent game from the Aeroflots tournament in Moscow. And the game is like an interesting kind of modern opening line. It's like uh, anti-Grunfeld. ECO might classify it as a King's Indian, but it's clearly part of the Grunfeld family. Like, and it's an anti-Grunfeld as we'll see. And the game is very sharp and short. It's a game where Yobava is black, who's 2,700 plus, and the United States' Ray Robson is black. And unfortunately, you know, I, I root for Robson, young American player. I played him a couple times, and I featured some of his wins, some of his nice victories on our site. But in this game, everything goes wrong and he loses quite badly, but, you know, the game is kind of instructive for this kind of attack in the Grunfeld line, and it's an anti-Grunfeld line, but it still ends up with a, you know, very Grunfeld-like position. So let's take a look at this line that I'm talking about. It's d4, knight f6, c4, g6. Now, usually white will play knight c3, and then black can play d5 with a Grunfeld, or bishop g7 heading for a king's indian. Sometimes white will also play knight f3, bishop g7, g3, and then black has to decide if he's going to play a Grunfeld with d5 or if he's going to castle with a king's indian. But in this line, a lot of times white delays knight c3 because of d5, the cd, knight d5, bishop g2. White wants to avoid this capture on c3 where his pawn structure ends up like this, so he'll just castle. You know, black will usually play like knight's to b6, because there's no knight to capture there. And then after castles, maybe knight c6 attacking the d pawn. So kind of different set of lines. Um, but here white plays a different move. He plays f3. So this line is really directed against the Grunfeld. So the idea is bishop g7. White will just play e4, like d6, knight c3, and get into a Samish king's indian. Now, one reason that this anti-Grunfeld line has shown some popularity is that the Samish is being played a little more against the King's Indian. For a long time, white avoided the Samish because of this gambit with c5, but white has been really striking back in this line, uh, even just taking the pawn on c5. So, you know, if the Samish King's Indian was considered to be completely harmless now, then the, the anti-Grunfeld would not be so dangerous. Maybe it would be good as a practical weapon to try to force somebody out of the Grunfeld, but theoretically maybe not so dangerous. But the Samish King's Indian is doing quite well. So here, Black has to make a decision. If he castles, he allows e4. But there's some other options. He could also play like uh, c5 trying to get a Benoni structure. The real Grunfeld move would be d5, and this is, you know, the main line. Then cd, knight d5, e4, knight b6, knight c3, bishop g7, bishop e3, castles, queen d2. And here the current line that is popular after knight c6, castles, uh, the classical line is e5, but in recent years, black has played f5 and actually done quite well with this move. The idea is to, you know, open the f-file, and if e5, then knight b4, and black will play bishop e6 and have the d5 square and some counterplay against a2. And there's been a lot of games in this line, you know, but it seems black is is doing okay, but, you know, white goes for it too, so it's kind of a topical line. So really, if black wants to play in like a pure Grunfeld spirit, that would be the way to do so. So if black does not like that line and doesn't want to go into like a King's Indian or Benoni, there's a couple other options. One is very exotic. Black plays e5, almost like a Budapest, de, and then knight h5. And the idea is that queen h4 is a threat. So... Um, you know, white has to take care of that, and then black will, you know, let's say after something like knight h3 with the idea of knight f2, and black will play knight c6 and try to um, just get this pawn back, because f4 would be kind of weak thing. So this line isn't seen too much, but it's kind of an interesting and exotic idea. But 
One of the current favorite ideas here for Black, if Black doesn't want to go to a, into a King's Indian and doesn't like that other Grunfeld line, is to play this move knight c6. So this is quite interesting. It's like a two knights tango opening, but with f3 and g6 thrown in. And this is kind of provocative, but it's, uh, it's flexible too. So what are the ideas here? So we'll look at a couple. The, the most common move is probably d5, knight e5, and e4, d6, knight c3, bishop g7. Now if white just develops, uh, tries to develop normally, then black tends to get good play. The thing is, both, you know, this square is taken away from white's knight, and if it goes to h3, black can take it and ruin the pawns. And if it goes to e2, then this pawn will hang on c4 in some cases. But white could do this, uh, you know, right away, because knight c4, then queen a4. But after, like, castles, knight g3, maybe bishop e2, black can play, like, c6. And there's some potential problems on this diagonal. You know, white's development is a little slow. Black can also strike with e6. And in this kind of setup... Um, you know, black tends to do okay. So the other idea for white would be to play f4, knight e b7. And this is where things get interesting. Again, knight f3 would be met with, like, castles, and then c6 with ideas like knight c5, queen b6. And black has done okay here. Uh, Svidler won a well-known game against Nakamura with black, and this line won very quickly. So the other idea for white, which is kind of ex exotic by white, you know, meeting, you know, black's modern play with something interesting is a very peculiar looking move, which, uh, you know, has done, actually done okay for white. And the idea is to play knight h3. And this move looks kind of ludicrous. Like, how can f3 not be the right square? But the point is that the knight's going to go to f2. So after, like, castles, knight f2, the knight does a few things here. It guards the g4 square. It protects the e4 square. And it also kind of blocks this diagonal, at least for now. So white won't have any trouble castling. And maybe maybe at some point white will even play like g4 himself. So, But the main thing is to protect these two squares. So that's kind of an interesting idea. And this kind of line is still developing. There's still, you know, games uh, here and there coming in. It, of course, this line isn't super common, but this is one of the places where the play is being debated. So if white doesn't want to go into this line where his position can get a little overextended, he could also play e4, but then black plays e5. And the point is, if d5, the knight can go to d4, and now black doesn't even have to fianchetto his bishop. He can support his knight here. And the weaknesses on his king side aren't so serious. He has good dark square play in the center. And if white takes on e5, then after knight takes, like knight c3, bishop g7, White has kind of some similar development problems, but black will also be able to play castles. And then because he hasn't spent a tempo in d6, he also has the idea to maybe do c6 and d5 in one go, like combined with maybe rook e8, even if it's a pawn sacrifice. So this could be uh, rather dangerous for white. So in this game, Yubaba didn't play any of those moves. He played knight c3. So now... He's, you know, ready to play e4, maybe d5. Black could probably play bishop g7 here, you know, when white still has to show his hand. But if bishop g7, then e4, e5, d5. Now the bishop is no longer on this diagonal, so after knight d4, you know, knight e2 is possible.